Hey everybody, it's the Modern Native. So, almost froze to death last night. I made it just a couple hundred feet up elevation, and there's snow on the ground still. In spots. Everything froze. My water and my coffee. <clears throat> Had to break the boys' water with ice, or with rocks. I boiled water in a bag with rocks to make coffee. My aunt gave me some beef stew in one of those foil pouches. I was able to warm that up next to the fire. Sorry about the shaking, I am freezing. Last night I barely slept, and when I did it was actually kind of scary, because... I wasn't actually asleep, but I was almost like hallucinating. I was so cold. He knows I'm upset. We'll be okay. I'll figure it out. I always do. They stayed warmer than I did. They sapped a lot of my heat. It's a very pretty lake. Happy I made it to it. Well, I guess that's why they call it Rock Lake. Big old rock in the middle. At least I made it here. So I made it back down to the falls with the boys. But it's one of those days that's super cold and I don't want to futz with the fire. So I had a fire starting tip for you guys I wanted to share. These are feminine hygiene pads, you know, menstrual pads, period pads. So before the wife left, we were separating the alcohol into smaller bottles, well, into a smaller bottle, and there was still a bit left, and I had the idea to take some of her pads and soak them in alcohol. Now, it would be a really good thing if I had a bad puncture wound or a bad slice I could, that was bleeding really bad. I could open one of these up, slap it on there, and tape it in place. But also, it makes a really great fire starter. So I wanted to share that with you guys and show you how well it works back at my pretty fire pit but see just a pad and I'm gonna drop it in there might stand it up yeah. I'm gonna throw some of these across like so And give her a light. Bam. If I can hit the other side. Not light my glove on fire. Bam. So now I won't have to mess with it. It won't be dealing with birch bark. It won't be if it will start. It started, and it'll burn. So, quick little fire start for you guys. Stay tuned. So when it comes to survival, and being a survivalist, it's not just about having skills, having equipment, or going through experiences. It's also about having the mental fortitude and the wisdom to know when it's time to get yourself out of a situation. Understanding when a situation is no longer survivable. Uh, when I got up there to Rock Lake, it's like 2.5 miles up. 
Uh, it doesn't seem like much, but at the same time, I went up maybe four or five hundred feet in elevation. And I'm already high enough that that bit of elevation changed the whole climate. So I'd break up the dog's water and it would start freezing. I, my water bottle was frozen solid. I had to warm it up over the fire. My coffee froze. So it's just everything was freezing way too fast, way too quickly. There was frost on the ground. We were covered in frost when I woke up. So it's like my, my gator was frozen this morning. Even with my hot breath going into it, the moisture in my breath wet freeze. It was freezing around the edges. It's actually only just now thawing out. And they're calling for, what I think he said, four to eight inches tonight of snow. Great. So I'm getting a fire going. I'm getting something to eat because I haven't eaten yet today. And I took this hike down. My blood sugar got low, but I have some packs of raisins in the side pouch that's on the, the belt strap for my bag. And I was able to snack on those a little bit. It got me through. I had to take, like... 10 breaks. I couldn't believe it. Like every every 100 yards, every 200 yards, I'd have to sit on a log, prop up the bag, cinch it tighter because it just kept going loose. That's how heavy it was. But you live and you learn. Hopefully you live. Hopefully I live. See, the water's flowing, but it's still freezing. And when I got this water, there wasn't any ice in it. But now there's frozen chunks. It's how fast it's freezing. I only got that like 20 minutes ago, not even. And you can see the icicles under the rocks and all along there. Even with that kind of flow. That's how freaking cold it is. So we've got some snow coming in. He was right, four to eight inches. Easily. Get back under the tent, the tarp, snow dog. He can reach right underneath, right in bed with me, just like Creature is. Why are you such a snow dog? Though dad's out in the snow, I'm gonna be out in the snow. So this is my shelter. The tent, the tarp is all like stretched from the rain bowing it. But it should do all right. As the weight's building in certain spots, it slides down, and I'll be up periodically to check it. This is just the best option I got. So I've already got a nice pile of snow going. So we'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. So how do you have a fire in the middle of snow? You build it a house. There we go. I had to use one in the back to prop it up. It gives it shelter from the snow. Doesn't work as well for rain, but then I built the fire underneath. It'll go up and it'll be a long burn fire. And everything will collapse down onto itself the way I have it formed. 
should keep me warm all night. Stay tuned. So we survived the night. My fire didn't burn all the way down, but now I'm doing a different tactic. It's drying rack with the center fire. Making some rice and some chicken. Had some bacon for breakfast. Thanks again, Jake. Appreciate it. But me and the boys in the shelter, we survived. I had to get up every 40 minutes and check this out, knock it off, and make sure there wasn't too much buildup. I had a ridge line with some Prusik knots on it. I don't normally do that. But uh, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Storm ended mid morning. So. I got up uh, 6 and like actually got up for the final time and made some coffee, made some bacon and then went back to sleep because I didn't have to wake up so the storm was passed, there wasn't going to be any build up so I just took a few extra, a few hours nap too close to like 7.30, 8 o'clock, maybe 9. And I didn't wake up till 2 when the hunter went through. So. Uh, now I'm ready to make dinner and go to bed. This is exhausting. Gotta say that. I'm tired. Was not prepared for the storm. I only found out about it like 2 hours before it hit. So yeah. Awesome. It's hard to gauge when snow is coming. Yeah, there's a huge pile of snow back there. But we stayed warm. The boys cuddled me on either side. They have their own blankets that they got wrapped in. I stayed fully dressed because I knew I was going to have to get up tonight as long as it doesn't snow. I'm getting in my jammies, curling up with the boys, and I am sleeping all night long. So, dinner's almost done. Catch you guys in a bit. You know, I always forget to record things this whole time. Like, there's so much throughout the day that happens, and so much that I do, and it's... I never think to actually record. You guys get, like, one-tenth of what happens out here. I gotta learn how to get better at catching everything. Here's our fire for the night. I'm gonna get some water boiling. Well, some slush. I'm going to get some slush boiling, and I have some hot cocoa, courtesy of Alex. Thank you. Thank you, my brother from across the water. Uh, awesome dude. And I'm going to get some water boiled up and have some chocolate, cho uh, hot chocolate that was tablets, hot chocolate tablets. What, what, what is it? Uh, Oh yeah, Abuelita. That's right. Abuelita chocolate. Grandma's cough. Hot, hot chocolate. Oh, I'll be good. And I'm just hovering over the fire. Before I get that going. But that's what I was trying to say. is uh, I always forget to actually press record and show you guys things. And this is a perfect example. I almost was getting ready to do this. And then I was like, you know what? This actually would be a pretty cool moment to catch. Uh, I'm going to fill that up with some slush, water, 
and boil it. Oh, things we do out here. It's getting rough. The boys are nice and warm now. They're curled up in there. I've been checking their temperatures on their ears. They've been doing good. The creature is uh, stealing my pillow. Monster stealing the blanket. Uh, stay tuned. Oh yeah, check this out. Frozen. Solid. Solid. When you have to thaw out your ropes before you untie them. That looks like wire. <laughs> sure does provide a gorgeous view, even if it's deadly. They do love the snow. So, one thing that we haven't had to deal with so far is predators, coyotes, quay dogs, and the like. But after someone came through with a fresh kill and left a blood trail, uh, that might be a problem now. So, I'm going to do what I can to scrape up and muddy up this blood trail, try to bury it in some fresh snow, to try to prevent predators from tracking it straight into camp. Ugh, oh, I need a stronger stick. But hopefully I can reduce the risk. But I just I have a bad feeling about it. I just know that this is when we're gonna have to deal with visitors because it's a it's a nasty blood trail so this is my shelter for tonight it's a nice plow it's a wide plow but it's enough for the boys to get underneath with me got a tarp down with the blankets hey the wife's the wife came to hang out. She brought me some stuff. We're trying to figure some things out. She'll be going back out tonight. But I'm probably going to have a little fire. I'm going to set up a rock fire right here. Keep it real nice and controlled. And Creature will avoid it because he's a smart one. He knows what fire is. And I'll scooch us back a little bit. Let's say. So I'm very happy that the wife was able to come out and visit me. And we got to hang out for a bit. She's going to be here for a little bit longer, and then her ride's going to be coming back. But, it's going to be a cold and dark walk. Yeah. Stay tuned. So this is my survival fire that I'm having for tonight. I got a rock over it because it's <laughs> right near the shelter edge. So I'm going to keep it controlled, keep it small, and it's just going to warm up these rocks. And then I'll just keep it smoldering for most of the night. And I got to watch my tarp edge. It's starting to get a little bit hot right now, but it'll warm up the area as long as I keep it controlled and watch it. Should keep me warm all night because body heat and everything will backsplash off the tarp and everything else. So stay tuned.
Wilson. Sad to see him go, but he's got to go. Catch you later, Wilson. The wife left a little bit ago. Now I'm warming up a Nutri-Grain bar and a piece of jerky on the rock that's over my little survival fire. That's what I'm calling it because it's just a tiny little fire pit to warm up rocks to keep me warm enough to warm up the area to help survive the night. Alrighty everybody, so when you're out here, it's freaking cold, and you can't find a lot of deadfall, you've got to find what's sticking out of the snow. Firewood can be scarce, and it's a lot of effort and energy to find enough firewood to keep yourself warm. You guys know I like a big roar and hot fire, but I got a quick survival tip for you guys to help you maximize the wood that you have, while still maximizing your heat. So the tip is, start small. Now this is like super small, maybe four inch pieces that I've broken up. And this fire is only going to be the size of my hand before it builds up. And as I go, I'm going to get bigger pieces and let them stay a little bit longer so I can stretch out the fire. It helps the wood last longer, produces more heat quickly, and it's easier to start. Don't struggle with trying to just start a big fire. Start small. Once you have a fire, you can build it bigger. Simple as that. That's just a quick survival fire tip, so the coming from experience here. And uh, hope that helps you guys out. Hope it makes you think while you're out there. Be smarter, work smarter, not harder. And bam, just like that, a nice roaring little fire in just a couple of minutes. I couldn't film and do the uh, fire at the same time this time. My hands were not cooperating. It's too cold. But I only used the little bundle right on the one side. And got that nice roaring fire. I'll be able to make some coffee, warm up some water for the dog food. And make some breakfast. Stay tuned. So now even my watering hole is freezing. It's a moving creek. So I had a pretty good idea for breakfast. Of course, milk and sugar for coffee. But I got some flatbread from Alex and an apple and some fruit plus some seeds. But I got most of this from Alex. He was an awesome dude. But I'm going to cut up the apple into small little pieces. I'm going to cook it up with some of these dried fruit bits and make my own little jelly and I'm going to crush up and fry these sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds I think I don't know they taste good and put a little garlic seasoning on there and make my own kind of peanut butter so I'm gonna have peanut butter and jelly for breakfast on some flatbread yum so I diced up the apple, added in the little dried fruit bits, and poured a couple scoops of sugar on top, a touch of oil, and some water. And I'm going to cook that up, steam it up, boil it up, and smash it up, and make it into a jelly. Stay tuned. So the jelly is boiling up nicely. I just put the nuts in here nuts, seeds, I don't know, with a little bit of oil. I got the pan tilted so everything stays on the side. And I'm going to fry it up, crush it, fry it up, crush it, try to make some butter, something like peanut butter. And if not, it'll just be some seasoned roasted be uh, seeds I can put on my sandwiches with my jelly. So this came out nice, tastes pretty good. It's a little loose, I could probably boil it a couple more times and get it to 
go into a butter state, but I like this, it tastes good. I don't want to burn it. This is coming out great. Ought to be a tasty breakfast. Bam. Some hot fruit jelly and seed butter on some toasted sandwiches, flatbread sandwiches. Took a couple of snacks, made a nice meal out of it. Stay tuned. So we're doing all right. The shelter's holding up. We stayed warm last night. The fire pit did its job, the warming fire. And yeah, gonna be just chilling out in there probably for the rest of the evening, staying warm with the boys. Surviving out in the cold in the winter like this, it's uh, definitely a little different, it's definitely a struggle. Heat is the main priority, so firewood and maintaining the fire, trying to figure out how to make them last longer, trying to figure out how to use wood smarter, and eating. That's, that's the main thing is trying to make sure that you intake enough calories. That's why I feed the boys with um, warm water in their food. It helps them get the hydration they need and it helps the food digest better. Makes them eat just a little bit slower too. Uh, so they're doing good. Still have plenty of food for them. Uh, I'm going to keep you guys posted. So definitely stay tuned. So I've got the fire already going in here for the boys and for me for later. I got wood stockpiled, plenty extra more wood than I had yesterday. A lot more wood than yesterday. And I'll be good for the rest of the night. I just finished cooking dinner. I'm just gonna leave it on to stay warm for a little bit until I go to settle down. Then I'll bring it in here and set it on the warming rock and then eat it when I want to. But I just wanted to cook it over the big fire. But we're all set in here. The boys are all cuddled up together. They're so cute. So yeah, I think we'll be good for the night. The wife brought hot dog chili when she paid me a visit. We were going to have it with the hot dogs, but it didn't end up having it. But it makes great chili and rice. I'm brewing up another pot of coffee. And just about ready to call it a night. Got some socks thawing on the back. But I wasn't quite hungry yet, but I wanted to have that made and ready and just staying warm. Maybe a little too warm there. Relatively clear skies over me tonight, so hopefully no storms. But we'll see. <sighs> Catch you guys later. So we're settling down for the night, got my nice stack of wood, got the fire going, eating a little bit of chow, and gonna cut it with the boys, do some editing on my videos, compile them together, yeah, see you in the morning. Well we're getting some more snow today. Snow dogs, go back inside. Had to make an adjustment, had to block some wind on that side. It kept blowing snow in. But we should be alright. Just gotta shake it off. There's no way for me to get it tight enough in this position. <sighs> Stay tuned. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oops. Had that a little too close to the fire, I guess. Oh, that side bubbled too. Didn't even notice. I mean, it's still... Old fluid. Oh, oh, there is a leak. Son of a bitch. Oh well, so much for this bottle. 
wasn't even holding it there long. Just sitting right here. I guess I'm probably a little too close. Plastic melts. So tonight I got myself a big firewood wall. Try to keep in some of the warmth. The only problem with that is the colder it gets, the later it is, and the more wood I go through, the less wall I have. So I made sure it was extra big tonight. Had to stay an extra day here. Things are frozen in. I can't move. Uh, I was hoping the wife was going to be up today. Uh, I need some food, but um, we'll be all right. Stay tuned. Trish is telling me to stay in bed. And he's crushing his brother's head. This mess. Watch this. I don't know what's up with that big ass on. I just want to see. I just want to see cuddling Dad's back. Mm. Handsome. My watering hole is almost completely froze up. But, it's alright. Bring down the hatchet if I need to. I'm doing fine. Haven't, except for that one night up at Rock Lake, I haven't really gotten too cold. The boys have stayed warm, they've been totally fine. Um, especially the way I have the shelter, we are all just nice and cozy. Um, I've actually been sleeping in a little too much, because, uh, I'm just warm and cozy and cuddled up with them, and I'm just like, nah, I'm good. Put another piece of wood on the fire. I'm good. I can sleep. With the temperatures dropping the way they are, not being able to know the terrain ahead, and kind of just flying blind, I went up at night. So it's my first mistake. I didn't bring my cooking gear, my clothes, or my extra pair of boots. My second, third, and fourth mistake. When we were headed up, I lost my footing more than a couple of times and ended up actually in the creek. Big mistake number five. So my boots were completely soaked three or four times over. And then when I made it up there, didn't have enough time to set up a shelter. Didn't have cooking gear to be able to properly cook. So all I was able to do was make a fire, thaw things out try to warm up, but the wood was scarce, I was running low on energy, I could barely do anything, so that's that's why it became an issue, because I made some huge mistakes that are deadly in this kind of situation, and I needed to hightail it back to my gear, back to places I knew, and being able to set up a proper shelter took me a couple of days to recover from all of that. I had to thaw out. I had to warm up. Um, it was not a great experience. Um, day after tomorrow was Thanksgiving. The wife will be coming back up. Been kind of cruddy. Just being cold. And just waking up, getting firewood, making coffee, making food. Making the dogs food. And then uh, keeping the fire going and just going to sleep. And that's pretty much what my day's been. Just wake up, stir around the coals, use a little bit of wood if I still have it, try to warm up a cup of coffee. Have my cup of coffee, grab a snack if I can, and get it moving to get my fire with. Boil up some water, make the dog food, make some dinner, chill out for a few minutes, and then pass out. Wake up when the hunters go through in the morning. Thank you to a couple of hunters. One guy brought me a bag of sugar. One guy brought me uh, two pro bars and some M&Ms. Some of those peanut butter M&Ms. Definitely appreciate that. It's helped me out. I made mistakes. And that happens. But now I can't make any more mistakes. That's just... 
in situations like this and lifestyles like this, I can't make any more mistakes. One mistake can kill me. So I'm hoping to have some coffee brewed up here in a little bit. And I got some clips to show you guys. Lots of beautiful scenery. Try to think of uh, some survival tips for you guys. Stay tuned. So I decided to make dinner a little more interesting tonight. I'm having seasoned rice with some brown gravy thrown in at the very end so it, it like came out in chunks. But also some shredded up beef jerky in there. But I made some dough and I'm going to make more bread. I just ate a piece. More bread on my top rock. Stay tuned. So there we go. There we go. Plop some dough on there. Threw on some garlic and pepper. I'm going to let that cook for a while. And flip it, obviously. And we'll have some bread. Catch you in a bit. Flipped it over. And that's not burnt. That's um, soot off the rock. You'd be amazed at how much of a difference adding a little piece of bread like that to some rice really makes it go farther and feel like you're fuller and you've been eating more. It can be the difference. Later on I'm going to be making some dried fruit with some cinnamon bread. It might not be sweet because I don't have much sugar left. Might throw some M&M pieces in there or something. Creatures searching around. But I'll try to remember to catch that for you guys too. So I put a layer of dough down. And I'm going to sprinkle some fruit pieces. You're not getting away from me. I don't have many left, so. And I was thinking about it. After I add some cinnamon, I might try a couple of these. M and M dried fruit cinnamon bread. Why not? I gotta add an extra layer on top, pack it in, and then let it flip over. Had to make some space on my phone, but ah! figures. Oh, there she is. You can see the M and M melted. That should taste pretty good. Gotta finish dinner. I gotta make some more flatbread. Hmm. Catch you in a bit. Had to cut out a little hole so that way I could actually get to my watering hole. It's the only spot that's deep enough to actually dip everything in. But I had to get to it. It's getting rough. So I'm happy I was able to go down and catch the Wi-Fi. Thank you again, Alex. And I'm drying out my boots. But, thank you again, Alex. Because I'm going to have some Thanksgiving dinner. Some turkey fried on a rock. Early Thanksgiving, because um, the wife's going to be coming Friday to relocate us. Try to figure out a better situation. It's not going to be a great situation, but it's going to be closer into town and just kind of better so that way the wife can get to me, she can see us, she can see the dogs, resupply regularly so that way it's not like a week in between times where I can get resupply. It's actually one of the longest we've gone just in general. Like, um, I've usually made a trip into town or something by now, but I can't do that by myself. 
So things just aren't working out. That seems to be the song of this whole thing. Is things aren't working out. Things aren't working out. They aren't going the way they're supposed to. Hey, you know everybody thinks you're crazy, right? He's sitting there following the glare on the tent, on the tarp from my headlamp. Hopefully things will be better here soon. Stick around. I finally found something you don't like. Monster. Monster. You want some orange slice? C come on. Do you want some orange slice? Say, God, no, Dad. Get it out of my face. Do you want orange slice? <laughs> He'll literally eat anything, or at least try to taste it to see if he might like it. No matter what it is when I put it in front of him. That's the first time. Orange peel. He don't want nothing to do with it. So funny. Bam. Some roasted ham on a rock. Over a fire. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Very sweet boys. Cuddle with me by the fire. Yeah. Hi, creature. Why are you kind of So I made some cornbread for bre for breakfast, and I am making some chili with the last of my rice and the last bit of my seasonings, my packets anyway. But I've got the rest of the cornbread to eat with that later. But this is my breakfast for today. Wife's coming by tomorrow. I'm going to be figuring out a new spot for me. I'll keep you guys posted. I'm drying out my sleeping bag. My ground tarp. Look at my rations and I ain't got shit no more. Literally this rice, this pack of cornbread... And that was it. I've got three pounds of beans. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I've got three pounds of beans. Some flour. Almost out of sugar. Like, I'll be out of sugar today. And coffee. Oh, and tea. That's about it. So things are looking slim here. So hopefully it'll be uh, figured out tomorrow. And I'll have some more food. I told them I've got some food coming to me. But the boys, I mean, they still got like 25 pounds of food, so I mean, I definitely put put them first, and I've got no food left myself. But I mean, I could just make some flour, biscuits, and flatbread, and season it, I guess. <laughs> so we've been staying plenty warm. We melted this whole area. I didn't even clear out the snow, it melted at all. I was just starting to clear away the chunks from up here because now that it's got ground exposed, I can clear it easier. But yeah, we've been staying plenty warm. Oh, monster. We've been staying plenty warm. Melted off this whole area from our body heat. And that's through a tarp, a sleeping bag, three blankets, and then our body heat. Plus with like four blankets on top. So it's crazy. Monster. Well, you know, time starts meaning different things out here. It's almost dark, but it's only quarter to five. Either way, I'm still like, I could go to sleep. It's pretty much dark soon. Yeah. It changes. If there's nothing to do during the dark, you might as well save batteries and just go to sleep. I gotta make sure I have enough firewood keep fire going all night. Not this one. The one inside. I'm just drying out my sleeping bag and the tarp. But, uh, yeah. Things start changing their meaning. Bedtime is now nighttime. Anyway. Catch you guys later.
So, the wife came and took a load of stuff for me. I'm about ready to head out. Me and the boys. My boys. And we're about done here. It was a nice try. We gave it our best. I'm very disappointed, but I will redeem myself with the ultra through hike. Stay tuned. One last one. So who's ready to go make a bushcraft camp? Huh? You ready? Okay, let's go. Operation Save a Native is underway. So until next time, get out there, be a native, go beast.